Hello, George Romanic here. In today's video, we are going to talk about scaling analysis of Navier-Stokes equations in horizontal direction. If some of you are now saying, wait a minute, but what are Navier-Stokes equations? Then you have two options. Option number one is you close this video and you go and watch beauty bloggers. Option number two is you close this video and you go and watch my videos on deriving Navier-Stokes equations and discussing Navier-Stokes equations. I suggest option number two, but it's your choice. In one sentence, Navier-Stokes equations are the governing equations that describe motions of all fluids. In the case of this channel and our interests, it's atmosphere and the oceans. So, motion of air can be described using Navier-Stokes equations, and you will remember that we have various terms, various forcing terms, forces that affect motion of air. The question that we want to ask today, are all these terms equally important if we want to apply these equations to large scale motion of air in mid latitudes? So you see, I told you in previous video, you always need to know what is the phenomena for which you want to perform scaling. And scaling is estimating magnitudes of various terms in governing equations. So we want to estimate the magnitudes of terms in Navier-Stokes equations for specific phenomena, which is large scale motions in mid latitudes. Some of you might say, but why these? Why not? small scale motions in uh, your neighborhood? The answer is we have to start from somewhere. And generally we start from synoptic scales. These are large scales. Yes, you could start and say, I want to perform scaling for local phenomena, how wind blows around building. We could do that and we will do that. But we start from large scale from planetary scale, synoptic scales. In fact, the definition synoptic scale can be derived from the results of today's video, because we will see that at these scales, Coriolis force and pressure gradient force are big daddy. They govern the motion. And that will be clear at the end of today's video. Some of you might also be asking, why are you just scaling horizontal momentum equations? Why not vertical as well? Answer, I will carry out, I will carry out scaling of vertical momentum equation in a separate video. By now, you know that motion in the atmosphere and oceans is different in horizontal and vertical directions. The magnitudes of forcing terms and the dynamics of motion is different because atmosphere, as well as the oceans, is way, way wider than it is deep. And therefore, it is useful to separate horizontal from vertical motions. So today we will grapple with horizontal motions and then sometime in the future we will scale vertical momentum equation as well. Let's start. I think that the good place to start this video is where we finished in the last video. And you will remember that in the last video we performed scaling analysis of the horizontal pressure gradient components for mid-latitude cyclone. And we saw how these terms scale. Today's video is basically generalization of this, but instead of only looking at the horizontal components of pressure gradient, we will look into complete set of Navier-Stokes equations in the horizontal direction in atmospheric sciences. Also, in last video, we saw that these horizontal scales in atmospheric motions are different from one phenomena to another phenomena, and we covered various phenomena from mean free path of molecules all the way to planetary waves, that envelop our beautiful planet. So I suggest you also check that up, it's useful for today's video.
The goal for today is to perform scale analysis of the horizontal Navier-Stokes equations at synoptic scales in mid-latitudes. But before we go into explaining these things, I want to show you how mid-latitudes look like. This is from one of my papers, Romanich et al., from 2015, where we analyzed uh, some specific local winds over the Balkans. And in this paper, you can see synoptic map over part of the Europe and Asia. So it's mid-latitudes. You can see here we would have 45 degrees. The yellow lines are uh, borders of countries. So here are the Balkans. Here is Italy, Central Europe, North Europe. Here is already Asia, Russia, Greece and Turkey here. Here is Northern Africa and here is the Mediterranean Sea. You can see low pressure system over here. I can even indicate it. So this is a low pressure system over here. And somewhere here over Russia, you can see high pressure system. Thick lines are height of 925 millibar pressure level. And the arrows indicate wind. So you can see that wind is counterclockwise in cyclone, and that's also what I discussed in the last video. So this is idolized cyclone, and here you can see cyclone on a synoptic map. Also, remember from my videos, previous video, that synoptic charts are frozen in time. So they are given for a specific time instance that you can see here, for example. What I want to show you here is the typical value of wind is order of magnitude 10 meters per second. So reference value 50 meters per second has this length. So you can see that order of magnitude of winds is a 10 meters per second. So is it 10, 12, 20, 25? It doesn't matter. That's the same order, 10. Here I also show to you the surface map for this situation. And you can see that the pressure fluctuation is approximately 10 millibars over some thousand kilometers or so. Again, it is not exactly 10 millibars over thousand kilometers, but that's the order of magnitude that we have here. And lo and behold, we had the same argument in my previous video. So you can see how natural sciences connect nicely, topic to topic. So now when you are familiar with the pressure surface and how the synoptic situation looks like, we can go back to this important page for today's video. So let's first analyze this table over here. This table gives us characteristic scales of the feed va uh, field variables for mid-latitude synoptic systems. And remember, we have to know these from previous video. We have to know these characteristic values in order to be able to carry out scaling. So the first column is the scale name and symbol, then characteristic value, and then certain remarks that I have. Horizontal velocity, I just argued from this synoptic uh, chart that it's order of magnitude 10 meters per second. Vertical velocity is order of magnitude one centimeter per second. But remark, this is not directly measurable at synoptic scales. So we can only diagnose it or infer it. And I will cover how in future how we do that. We can use continuity equation, we can use thermodynamic equation, omega equation, and so on. So this cannot be measured, only inferred. Length scale, I again argued from a previous uh, page, that it's approximately 1,000 kilometers. Depth scale is troposphere, and troposphere is uh, in mid latitudes is uh, around 11, 12 kilometers. You can check my video on the standard atmosphere, and that's the order of magnitude 10 to, 10 to the power 4. Then horizontal pressure fluctuation has the symbol delta P over rho, where rho is density of air. Horizontal pressure fluctuations are normalized by density to produce scale that is valid at different heights in the troposphere. 
Because remember, both pressure and density approximately exponentially decrease with the height. So if I would take pressure difference at different heights, but keep density of surface air, then that's not correct approach to analyze this problem. It is also interesting to note that the unit of delta P over rho is meter square over second square, and I hope you recognize that the unit of geopotential. Maybe I can even refresh your memory on that. You will remember from my video on geopotential that minus one over rho delta P delta X at constant height, so pressure gradient force at constant geometric height is equal minus G delta Z at delta X at constant P. So this is at the height of constant pressure and that is uh, G times Z is geopotential minus delta phi delta X at constant P. So what I want to say here is that the magnitude of pressure fluctuation on a surface of constant height is equal to the magnitude of fluctuation of geopotential at the surface of constant pressure, namely isobaric surface. And that's why here we have units of geopotential. Another scale variable is advective time scale and uh, Advective time scale is the time required to travel this distance L if you have velocity U. And advective time scale is appropriate time scale for weather systems that move with the, with the mean horizontal velocity U, which is typical for mid-latitude systems. This also means that differential operator DDT scales as this. And we will assume that center of our disturbance is in mid latitudes because we are interested in mid latitudes. So let's say 45 degrees and therefore Coriolis parameter and uh, Coriolis parameter in the vertical direction are the same and they scale as 10 to power minus four Hertz. And the uh, radius of the earth R is 10 to power six meters in terms of order of magnitude. Now, when we discuss these characteristic scales and variables, we can go finally to Navier-Stokes equations and scale them. These are terms in Navier-Stokes equations in the horizontal direction x and y. First, we have local derivatives, and you can see they scale as u squared over l, because I just told you how this uh, scales, and we add u, so you get u squared over l. And the magnitude of this term is 10 to power minus four. Then horizontal advection scales the same way as local derivative and therefore it has the same magnitude. Vertical advection is order of magnitude smaller because W is smaller than horizontal velocity and also depth of the atmosphere is smaller than the characteristic horizontal length scale. And then we have nasty curvature terms. I spent 15 minutes in one video deriving these. And we can see how they scale here. They are smaller than advection terms and local derivatives. Then we have pressure gradient force. And you can see delta P over rho scales, and ten, uh, scales as 10 to power 3 and L is 10 to power 6, so this scales as, as 10 to power minus 3 meters per second square. All these have units of acceleration, force per unit mass, namely. Horizontal Coriolis force has the same scale as the pressure gradient force, whereas the vertical component of the Coriolis force has much smaller magnitude, three orders of magnitude smaller. And then we have viscous forces in horizontal direction, as well as viscous force in vertical direction, and they have very, very small magnitudes. Here is a small remark. This over here is new. That's kinematic viscosity of air, whereas this inside is a component of velocity. So I don't want you to think that I don't know the viscosity terms. It just happened that this V and this new are very similar, but these are different symbols, different variables. 
So what can we conclude from this analysis, from this beautiful physical argument? We can conclude that in horizontal direction, momentum equations at synoptic scales in mid-latitudes are such that the most important terms are the pressure gradient force and horizontal component of Coriolis force. In other words, these two forces govern the motion at synoptic scales in mid-latitudes in horizontal plane. If we want to be more precise about the motion, then we should include local derivatives and horizontal advection, because that's, these two are the next largest terms. Then we need to include vertical advection and one of the curvature terms. For example, it's interesting to note that curvature term, this guy over here, is more important than the vertical component of the Coriolis force. And vertical component of Coriolis force is usually neglected, but it's somehow more famous, let me put it like that, than curvature terms. But curvature term is more important than the vertical component of the Coriolis force at mid-latitudes. There is really no need to tell you anything more about this topic except that today you gain a lot of knowledge. Now you know characteristic values of all terms in horizontal momentum equations applied to large-scale motions in mid-latitudes. It may sound specific, horizontal motions, mid-latitudes, large-scale, but this describes a large variety of dynamical processes in the atmosphere. We see that the only two forcing terms that are of the same order of magnitude and larger than others are the horizontal components of the pressure gradient force and the horizontal components of the Coriolis force. And as the first approximation, we can take these two forcing terms as the only terms that govern the motion at large scales. And in the next video, we will examine what happens and what type of motion we will get if only these two forces are present. Until then, goodbye.